Hey guys, for today's video, I'm going to try and beat Resident Evil 3 with only a knife. If you've played Resident Evil 3, you know just how hard this game is. Not only does it have the most enemies of the first three games, but it also introduced one of the scariest monsters in horror video games, the Nemesis. Thankfully, the game balances these insane challenges by adding a lot of new features in the series, such as ammo crafting, emergency evade, and the 180 quick turn that is now in basically every other Resident Evil game. This makes Resident Evil 3 the best game to try a knife only run on, and that's what I'm going to do. But before we get started, let's go over the rules. For rule 1, we are only allowed to use the knife. Any enemies we have to fight are only beatable if we use the knife. We are allowed to use any environmental hazards to fight as long as they can be activated with a quick slash of our knife. For rule 2, we are playing on hard with the arrange mode setting. If you don't understand what that is, let me explain. So I'm playing the Japanese PC port of Resident Evil 3 with the classic rebirth patch installed. This port came with an arrange mode which makes the game as difficult as the North American release. Now that that's explained, let's start the challenge. We immediately start with randomly flying out of our apartment building for some reason. We quickly dodge a zombie and run through an alleyway until we find Dario Rosso. No! He kindly tells us to fuck off and we have to go on without him. We run upstairs into the warehouse and drop off all our items except our knife and our first aid spray. We grab the key on the wall and use it to leave the warehouse. We run through the streets of Raccoon City until we see someone barging through a door with a bunch of zombies. Unfortunately, we need to push through these zombies to get an item in the basement. The best way to get through this is to reset this room by exiting and re-entering the area. This can give us more favorable enemy positioning. This allows us to get enough time to enter the basement without getting grabbed. We push the zombie in the basement and grab the lighter fluid. Thankfully, I got lucky and actually managed to dodge the zombies upstairs. This usually never happens, but thankfully I got it. We run through the streets of Raccoon City, managing to avoid every zombie in the way until we reach the RPD, where shit gets serious. Brad! We've got a... We watch Brad get obliterated by Nemesis, and now we are on our own. We get a choice to fight or run away, and since I'm not a chicken, we decide to fight. Just kidding. Instead, we grab Brad's keycard and run into the RPD. We use the keycard to get the star's key, which lets us grab Jill's lockpick from her desk. But when we try to leave, the nemesis shows up to ruin our day. He almost got me, but I managed to escape just in time. So, the run has been going pretty well so far. I'm not the greatest at using the emergency evade, but still I'm able to shove most zombies out of the way. But this changes now, because Nemesis is able to show up whenever he wants, so that makes this way more intense. He shows up in the most random spots too, which can make for some pretty scary situations. Eventually we reach the cable car, and now we have to gather some parts to get it running again. This wasn't too bad, as some of the areas are pretty light on enemies, but there were still some parts that just sucked. There were some areas that were absolutely flooded with zombies, and these were spots where I would get bit pretty frequently, such as the statue where you get the battery, as the only way to survive is just to be good at the emergency evade, and the group of zombies in the umbrella office which can be made easier by slashing the valves. These are the only parts that I would say are hard. Everything else is fine if you are good at just running around enemies. Once we collect all the parts for the cable car, we start it and Nemesis comes in to ruin our day. Thankfully, Mikhail, being an absolute chad, sacrifices himself to get Nemesis off our backs. 
Unfortunately, the train is going to crash, so we decided to jump out the window. We now are at the clock tower, which is surprisingly easy as there aren't that many enemies to worry about. The clock tower is more about puzzle solving than fighting enemies, which I like as it gives me a little bit of reprieve during the challenge. The only annoying enemies are spiders as they are in such a tight hallway which allows them to poison you quite easily. Once we finally ring the bell in the clock tower, a helicopter comes in and we are able to finally escape this nightmare. It's finally over. Huh? Just kidding, instead we have to fight Nemesis again. This is one of the hardest fights in the game on a regular playthrough. Nemesis is insanely fast and he does a lot of damage. Not just because of that, but also because you can't see what your health is. Because of this you have to judge how much health you have based on movement. Once you see Jill start to stagger is when you should heal. Now it may seem almost impossible to beat this fight knife only, but it's surprisingly simple. You can easily get Nemesis stuck in a very specific spot, which allows you to knife him over and over. You still have to be cautious however as he can easily break out of this spot and grab you. It is easy to get him into the spot over and over, so it isn't too hard. Once he's done, we now have to play as Carlos. The hospital section as Carlos is surprisingly complicated for one reason. If you have hunters spawn on the fourth floor or the third basement floor, it is impossible to get into the elevator as they will just stun lock you to death and they will also just get in the way of the elevator doors. Since this whole section is based on RNG, it is a good idea to save beforehand. So we first head to floor B3 and if we get zombies on this floor, we have to reload to our last save. Once we get the first part of the vaccine, we get in the elevator and head to the first floor. Again, if we get zombies on this floor, we have to restart. If you don't get zombies on this floor, save. Then we head to the fourth floor, and if you did it right, you should get zombies on this floor, which means the rest of this section is a breeze as no hunters will spawn. After we make the vaccine, we make our way back to Jill and cure of the virus. Now that we're back in control of Jill, we run from Nemesis until we get to Raccoon City Park. This park is capable of having some horrendous RNG and can put a bunch of hunters in your path, with the worst example being the Path to the Dead Factory. It's possible to get three hunters in this tiny path and this makes getting the key here insanely hard. But since the gaming gods were on my side this time, this wasn't the case. I did get hunters in every other spot though, but it wasn't too bad. Before we get to leave the park, we have to fight the Gravedigger. We can't fight it head on, but thankfully it has a time limit. We dodge its attacks to the best of our ability until the street lights in the center of the room tilt. We hit both of them with our knife which makes them fall over and electrify a puddle, allowing us to kill the worm. Now that he's down for the count, we unlock the door leading to the dead factory, and as we start to cross the bridge, we get intercepted by the nemesis. With no other choice, we jump off the bridge and run to the sewers leading to the dead factory. In the dead factory, there aren't that many enemies, and with good RNG, I didn't have to deal with any more brain suckers. Real challenge is the fight with nemesis in the trash disposal room. This fight was pure cancer. The reason for this is mainly getting nemesis to stay in the path of the acid. If you don't hit the levers at the right time, Nemesis will just walk out of the way like an asshole. It also doesn't help that the lock on sometimes just doesn't work, and Jill will instead lock onto Nemesis. This is obviously a skill issue, but man does this part suck. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once he's dead, we grab the key card, and now we have to escape Raccoon City before a missile strike. We quickly gather as many healing items as we can and get to our final encounter with the Nemesis. This fight plays just like how it does on every playthrough. Push all three generators in place and lead Nemesis in front of the railgun. After taking a few shots, the Nemesis goes down and once we try to leave, the Nemesis gets back up and we get a choice to kill him or run like a coward. Since we're only using a knife, we ran and left him to be destroyed by the incoming missile. We meet up with Carlos and quickly got on a chopper and escape before the city is destroyed. It's coming! Yeah. It's the end. have it. We beat Resident Evil 3 using only the knife. And if I'm being honest, this really wasn't that bad, surprisingly. There were some parts that were absolutely miserable, but the dodge mechanic made everything much better. It also helped that I got some pretty good RNG too. This run could have gone much worse though if it wasn't for that. I think the hardest parts of this challenge were the Nemesis boss fights in the hospital section with Carlos due to having to reload a lot. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next video. Later!